spoke earlier when I said that Josh Heitfeld had only one foul. He's got two. Mafra rejected by Day. That's his second block. Third all-time in block shots only as a sophomore. Bolden nails a triple. And just like that, Gonzaga leading this one by five. A 10-0 run for them, and it was triggered. Jeremy Pargo back-to-back -back clean steals at midcourt, turning them both into breakaway layups, and that really turned the momentum of the game around. Jackson gives off to Houston, and now Dorr with Bolden right up on him. Stephen Gray charged with that last foul. Here in San Diego, Gonzaga and the Toreros, John Chambi, Bob Valvano, as we take a look at the West Coast standings, and Gonzaga trying to go undefeated for an unprecedented third time, and this is big for San Diego, too. Absolutely. You see them fourth right now in that tie for fourth. If they win, or if Portland were able to win later on, they would wind up, San Diego would, as the number four seed in the tournament. And that's big. It's an unusual format in this conference. The top four actually get first-round buys. So they would be getting that first night off in Las Vegas, and that would be huge. Gonzaga, of course, as the champion, has a bye right through to the semifinals. Big start for both the bigs for San Diego and Gonzaga. For there at Hickfeld, each with eight. Jones collects the loose ball, goes in, and he's fouled. They get Day with that last foul. No, it was Josh Heifelt get going early. So he is in such a zone. He has set a career high twice for himself over the last couple of weeks. You saw the bank shot early, then the three, made another three after that. But Pomer hasn't disappointed either. Nice deep position inside. Gets it so deep they can't get their help. Again, same deal, getting good deep position. This Gonzaga team is so long defensively. You give them a chance to help, they are going to take advantage of them. That's why they give up just 37% shooting. But when you get it that deep, as Pomer did, able to convert it into eight points. When these teams got together in Spokane on January 31st, Gonzaga won easily by 17. And Pomer was badly outplayed by Heitfeld. Gino Pomer and just... 28 minutes came up with six points and two rebounds. Well, rebounding's been a problem for this team all year long. And the they started rebounding well today. In fact, when they won the rebounding battle against Portland, that was ending a streak of nine straight games where they've been out rebounding. Downs three off the mark. San Diego basketball. Terreros down four. Been a while since San Diego's last field goal. Gino Palmer at the 10 minute mark. Jackson get that rebound. That's big. Like for every team, but especially when you struggle on the glass. Your guards can get you some rebounds. That makes a heck of a difference. Jackson. Sure, but gathers in his own rebound and puts it home to Sean Jackson there. He's got five. He has evolved. The, the, Definition between positions has gotten more and more blurred. Your guards have got to rebound. Day down low and a foul on the floor. Timeout oh. on the court. Double they technical. Just teed here. up both Pomer and Day. 20 to 18, our score. <laughs> Nolan Smith and UConn trying to. Come up with the top spot in the land again as far as what happened here. Little Day drama. gets charged with the foul and then the double tech. Yeah, you got exactly right. But the reason it's significant, the double tech, is because, as you see, referee David Libby make the signal for the double technical. That, that personal foul was Day's second. The technical, which counted as a personal, now becomes his third. And that's a big problem for Gonzaga. Now, Day's got three. Heitfeld's got two. So they are dealing with some foul issues for some very important players. Tags will go to the press again. Happy to make the game go faster. Each team with seven team fouls. Jones tried to lob for Palmer. Ira Brown on him. And wide open right there is Brown. Wild game of runs here. 8-3 to start for the Zags, 12-2 for San Diego, bouncing back. 
And a 10-0 run by Gonzaga to retake the lead. But again, you mentioned it twice, and it couldn't be more accurate. The tempo favoring San Diego right now. That is the single biggest thing you look at for this sport. Under 10 on the shot clock. Cargo. Ira Brown. And Micah Downs there underneath and able to put it home. Downs has four. Sags a pretty good rebounding team. Plus almost four rebounds a game. That's been a big problem for San Diego basically all season long. That door being harassed gives down to Paul Mayer as a size advantage on Brown, but can't convert. Again, did you see them not able to get the deep position like he was earlier? How about Pargo exploding to the hoop? And Jeremy Pargo now with six. He has that senior and his emotion and mindset so influences the rest of the team. Mark Few told us after they lost to UConn, he really took it hardly. And of course, they lost a couple of games after that. He is uh, in many ways the emotional leader of this team. And he likes the fact that after the Memphis game, they all bounced back, including Fargo. They didn't let that translate into some other struggles. Oh, in and out there for Deshaun Jackson. Gonzaga trying to add to a six-point lead. Switching the ball screens. Fargo's pull up. Got it. Eight for Pargo. He has turned the whole momentum of the game around. Those two clean pickpockets at midcourt that led to layups. A couple of buckets here. Zach's flexing their muscles a bit. 16 3 run for Gonzaga. Under a minute to go here. First half from the Jenny Craig Center. Gonzaga trying to go unbeaten. An unprecedented third time in West Coast Conference play. Four in the shot clock. Jackson is bailed out. No, it's going to nope. be an offensive foul for an illegal screen. Yeah. And ABC and ESPN, your NBA destinations coming up tomorrow. Coverage 12:30. GMC NBA countdown. First at ABC, it's the Pistons and the Celtics, then the Lakers and the Suns, and finally on ESPN, the Cavs and the Hawks. The NBA on ABC and ESPN on Sunday. A Shaquille O'Neal, 45, he goes for against the Raptors. There's still some chicken left on that ball, I guess, huh? Boy, we talk about the pace. Like a kind of slow pace that Bill Greer likes, but he certainly can't like the fact his team only has 18 points. That's not going to be very many teams, and certainly not a team that the Zag is coming. Ball screen, what do they do? Tried to switch it. Margo can't spin it home, and that'll do it. So a tough defensive struggle both ways, but Josh Heitfeld, eight early points. Gino Palmer has matched him, and the difference is that much. 26-18, the Bulldogs leading to Toreros. Now let's join Ryan Burr, Jay Williams, and Adrian Branch for the halftime report. All right, John. Hey. Hey.